Hey guys, I hope you're hanging in there. I know uh, this is week two of the insane uh, quarantine challenge that we've been facing. And so um, I know the struggles are real. And so uh, if you're hanging in there, great job. Um, but I'm literally counting the days until we get to meet back and, um, and just hang out again. Um, and so before we get back into our regular schedule, because I know school's starting back up, at least if you're in Lawton anyway, but uh, if you're in Cash, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. But I know that school is supposed to start back up on April, or uh, what they call virtual classrooms, right? And so we're kind of starting to move back into our regular routine again of school, um, almost. And so before we do that, I want to take some time today and help you guys just reflect on um, what it means to live for Christ. Because we call ourselves Christians, and uh, a big misconception that um, the world has, and, and sometimes even we have, is we equate that with being a good person. And so that's kind of related. Uh, generally, as a Christian, you want to do good things, and you, you know, want to be a good person, but that's not what we're about. I'm not saying that you can go out and start being a bad person and saying, it's okay, I'm still a Christian. Um, but our faith in Christ isn't contingent on our actions, not by themselves anyway. Because there's no shortage of good people in this world. There are people out there doing great things, uh, humanitarians, philanthropists, people who donate money, donate time, donate effort into curing disease, feeding the hungry, saving the you know, saving the hurt, saving the poor. And so, if we're talking about good as context, then there's tons of people out there that would be good. But what we're talking about today is for you to be a Christian, for us to be Christ followers, it's not about being a good person, it's about surrendering. And you might be wondering, what does surrender have to do uh, with Christ? And the short answer is, it has everything to do with it. Because we're only followers of Christ when we lay down everything else and only follow Him. We're followers of Christ when we take all of our own desires, all of our own wants, and, and say, God, these aren't as important as yours. And so I'm surrendering my needs, I'm surrendering my desires, I'm surrendering my wants, and replace them with yours. It's about living a life where Christ is at the complete center and everything else revolves around Him. And that's what it means to be a Christ follower. Today's passage is in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. And so I really do want to encourage you guys to uh, read along. I'll have the words up here in a second. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul's letter to the Galatian church, it, it hits on one of the most important aspects of the gospel, which is that we are not saved by anything else other than our faith in Christ. And so Paul has an argument here earlier on in the chapter where he and Peter get in a disagreement um, because Peter is saying that you have to abide by Jewish traditions and Jewish laws and Jewish religious acts to become a true Christian. And Paul is saying that's not the truth. Our faith in Christ is the only thing we need to become a disciple, a follower of Christ. So it's easy to take our relationship with Jesus and transform it into just a big list of do's and don'ts. Um, and while Jesus does call us to make significant changes in the way that we live our lives, that's not what our relationship with him is about. All right, and if you guys would turn to Ephesians chapter 2, that's where we're headed next, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So the gift that Paul's talking about in these two verses 
is the fact that we're being saved solely based on God's grace and believing in that grace. And so there's no action um, that's really required on our part. There's no uh, redemption, there's nothing, no salvation, there's nothing that we're doing that causes that to happen. It's all God. All we are doing, as since it is a gift, we are receiving it. And we receive it by accepting the truth, which is that God has sent his son to die for us. And so with that in mind, let's head back into Galatians chapter 2 again. And we're going to break down that passage, that verse 20. And we're going to split it up into three different parts. So the first section of the passage says, I have been crucified with Christ. Now this leads into our first discussion question that I want you to uh, talk over with your class. And that is, Paul is very well much alive when he writes this letter, right? Because dead people don't normally write letters. Um, you kind of need to be alive for that. Uh, so what does he mean by when he says, I have been crucified with Christ? The second section uh, of the passage is written as, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And so we kind of go back to that first question, but the second discussion question is, if it's no longer Paul who lives, what does he mean by that? What does he mean that it is no longer he who lives, uh, but Christ who lives in me? And so the third part of this passage is broken down uh, into, And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And my third discussion question regarding this passage is, What does it mean when he says, by faith uh, in the Son of God? So when Paul writes, by faith in the Son of God, what is he referring to? And so before you discuss uh, your these questions in your classes, I want to take you to a, another passage that's really similar to this one. That's going to be found in Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. And it says, For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So Paul kind of brings up a very common theme uh, from the last passage when he says, For you have died. There's two types of deaths that we have to understand. And the first one is what we call the physical death, the, the death of the flesh. And so when we get old and we get sick and our body finally gives up, that's when we die our physical death. So our flesh is no longer alive. But the spirit is still very much alive. The second kind of death um, that you won't die if you believe in Christ is what we call death of the spirit. And so the death that Paul is talking about is when we have died, we, he is talking about our flesh. He is talking about our impure, our previous life, and who we were before we met Christ. That person is dead. So the John from before he knew God, before he met Christ, is no longer here. That John died the moment uh, that he accepted Christ. And a new John was born with God's Spirit. And so this doesn't, this doesn't mean that you're going to have a, a perfect life. It doesn't mean that you're going to do everything perfectly. It doesn't mean that you're going to stop sinning um, right away. Those are our goals. Those are the, the things that we strive for. Uh, but that's not what we immediately receive. And so Paul writes in the second half of that verse as your life is hidden with Christ in God. And this one is actually uh, really, really, really heavy. And so to unpack it, we kind of have to go back to the original idea of what Christ came here to fulfill. Right? So Christ came here to, to establish a relationship between us and God. Right? And he did that by breaking the barrier of sin. And in order for him to break that barrier of sin, he had to lead a perfect life. He had to leave a sinless, blemishless life. And that's what he did. And so when he died on that cross for us, because he was sinless, because he was blameless, he had the ability to take all of our sins and Take the punishment for that instead. 
after this life, after this time on earth is over, when God looks at John, at me, he's not seeing the John before Christ. He's not seeing John who, who sinned, who, the John who struggled with the world, who struggled with his flesh. He's not seeing any of that, but rather he is seeing Christ. He is seeing the perfect life that Christ has led because what Christ did for that uh, for us on that cross was that he essentially traded his life for ours. And so that perfect blameless life that Christ has led, he has now given us the reward for that. And so the overall theme of today's message was about surrendering our life to God, allowing God to be the Lord of our lives. And a big focus on that um, in our eyes is obedience. We tend to get caught up in that obedience part, but we also have to acknowledge that there's a factor in it where God is like a parent, a caring parent who is just caring for us. He's trying to make sure that we get the best um, out of our lives, the best things uh, that, you know, is for us to experience. Because there's never been a case where I look back and God's taken control of my life and I say, man, I wish I did that differently. Because God's path is the best path at all times. And it may not seem like it at the time, it may not seem like it before, but I promise you in hindsight, when you look back on it, any time you listen to God is going to give you the best possible outcome that you could ever even imagine. So before I wrap it up for today, I want to introduce three more discussion questions for you guys to think about. If we break down today's passage into our three parts like we talked about, then the first part can be summarized as dying to yourself. And so what we mean by dying to yourself is that the old part of you, the old sinful part of you needs to die off. So the things that weren't focused on God, that weren't focused on the kingdom, that weren't focused on his will for you, we need to slowly start killing off. And I don't mean like in a super drastic way, but we just relinquish those desires, our desires, that aren't in line with Christ's desires, and that's how we die uh, to ourselves. And so my first discussion question for you guys in this, uh, in this three part is what is something in your life that you feel like you need to die to yourself of? So what is something that you need to give up so that God can give you something better? The second point can be summarized as surrendering yourself, surrendering everything about you to God. And so what is an aspect of your life that you feel like you need to hand over the control to God? What is something that you've been holding on to that you know that God could do something better with? And the third part is just trusting in Jesus, trusting that he has your best intentions in mind. He has your best needs in mind. And so what is something in your life that you feel like you need to trust Jesus on and allow him to take control over it? So thanks again for watching, guys. And I really do want to encourage you to uh, talk it over with your classmates. Um, and if, if there's something that's preventing you from doing that, please reach out to me because I want to make sure that you guys have as close to an experience that you would normally have in your Sunday school classes, um, even though we can't meet in person. And so uh, I'm praying for you guys and I'm rooting for you guys and uh, just stay safe, stay smart. And uh, yeah, let me pray for you guys, all right? Father, we thank you that even in these troubled times that you are still here to guide us, that your word and your promises never fail us, Lord. And so right now, I just pray that you keep us safe in this uh, time of struggle, in this time of trouble, uh, and that we can just focus more of our lives um, on you during this time of rest, Lord. And I pray that we don't use this as a break away from you, but rather an opportunity to just grow closer to you, Lord. I pray that you continue to just encourage uh, these students, that you continue to love on them, and you allow us to love on them uh, for you, Lord. I thank you for all these things, and in your name we pray. Amen. Love you guys.